Okay, so DocuSign. There are, oh, let me get into a regular command. There are so many ways to use DocuSign. Um, I am going to stick to the most basic way to start. And then if you guys would like to know other ways, I can go into it. But sometimes knowing all of the ways can confuse you. Um, so I really suggest learning the basic way first. Once you have a grasp on that, then you can explore the other ways and see if they make more sense to you. Um, so first off, I know Sherry and Jen, you have this done. I'm not sure about you, Anita. The first thing you have to do is in your settings, you have to have DocuSign connected. Yeah, Anita, I, I, I think you guys use a team DocuSign account, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I have it this is probably connected. Yeah. Okay. So then you have to make sure that your client is in your contacts and command. Mm -hmm. We're all good there. Add contact, first name, last name, email is the bare minimum. Then from there, we're going to go to opportunities. So remember, an opportunity is like a transaction or a potential transaction. So we're going to skip over opportunity training, but you have to create an opportunity in order to use DocuSign. So let's create an opportunity. Um, so for Jen and Sherry, you're not on a team, so this will be great out for you. Anita, obviously you're going to choose TriMac here. Opportunity type is the most important thing that you don't mess up because it's the only thing that you can't change later. Um, so you have to choose whether you're dealing with a listing or a buyer, and it's really important that you choose properly. So just make sure you always choose that properly. Um, Jen and Sherry owner does not apply to you. That's a team function, but Anita owner would be either you or Chad, depending on who owns this transaction. And that's up to the team, how you determine who owns what. And then client. So you're going to put your clients in here. If you have more than one client, you can put both. Let's see, I don't have Sherry in there. Do Alex. So uh, one quick question, Erin, when you put in the contact, can you take that contact and this is based on the contact that's already in there and then you're at pushing to opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. I'm already in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't cool. create from the screen. I really wish you could create a, a contact from the screen, but you can't. Okay. So they have Perfect. to already be in your contacts. Yeah. That's kind of too bad. It'd be nice functionality for the future. I though. Know. They said at the beginning, they're like, yeah, we're going to add that and it never came. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so opportunity name, I would get in the habit of naming your opportunity, the transaction address. Now, if you want more details after that, totally fine. But for the office, when you submit paperwork, we do need the offer or sorry, the transaction address in here. When it's a buyer, you don't know the transaction address right away. You don't know what they're buying but you can edit it later. If it's a listing, you should know the address. Um, I'm just gonna call this DocuSign. I have too many one, two, three main streets. I don't know which is which once I get in there. Um, tags is up to you if you guys use, that's for filtering, sorting, keeping track of things. A lot of people use it for lead generation. Um, so where this deal came from. Estimated closing date, you probably don't know when you're creating the opportunity, so just leave it blank. You can fill it in later. Estimated listing price, or this would say budget if we were doing a buyer uh, opportunity. So just fill that in. It's not a required field if you don't want to fill it in. You don't have to, but it can't calculate your commission if you don't. Now, that's not related to DocuSign. That's more of an opportunity thing, but then commission rate. And then where in your sales pipeline is this going? So is this a seller you're still cultivating? Do you have a listing appointment or is it going to be an active listing? Let's throw this one in active for now. And then assignee again as a team function. So Anita, if you're creating this opportunity, likely you're the assignee because you're the one dealing with it. Um, but also maybe Renee's also an assignee so she can deal with some paperwork things like that. So once you hit complete, it will bring you into the opportunity to edit anything. You just click this pencil and you can edit all of this. And then to get to DocuSign, we're going to click on the documents tab and start a transaction. So as soon as you hit start a transaction, it's going to open DocuSign. 
you have to log into DocuSign like once every, I don't know if it's 12 or 24 hours, um, just like security so people can't just jump on your computer and access your DocuSign. So once you're in DocuSign, it's going to create a room for you. Um, so Anita, if you're used to dot loop, a room is the same as a loop. It's essentially like a folder, everything related to these clients for this transaction, or it's going to be in the same room. Um, so you'll see it named my room the same as I named my opportunity. And then we're go going to go to envelopes to send paperwork. So you're still going to fill out your documents in web forms, download those documents to your computer once they're filled out, and then upload them to DocuSign to send them for signatures. Okay, everyone good with that? Okay. So envelopes, every time you send paperwork, you have to put it in an envelope. Um, so just think of real mail. Um, you can't just put paper in the mail, like. Canada Post is not going to accept that. It has to be in an envelope. So just try to remember that. Um, you, Aaron, question. Um, so say, for example, I had sent paperwork to a client and now I not need to either send them adjusted paperwork or new paperwork. That's a new envelope. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So every time you send something, it's a new envelope. Once you put an envelope in the mail, you can't chase the mailman down and get it back from him to add more to it. Okay. <laughs> I know that's really oh, cheesy, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can also upload documents straight to the documents tab and then create an envelope with those documents. It really depends on your situation. I always train that you just upload into envelopes. However, this morning I was helping Alex with something and I realized in that situation, it made more sense for him to put them in the documents tab first and then create an envelope. So what he was doing was he had to get six offers signed by his sellers. He was ticking rejected and getting his sellers to sign all of his rejected offers. Some of the buyer's agents sent the offers as one document. So the APS and the water and septic schedule was one document and some sent them as two separate documents. So he wanted to just be able to send one document back to each buyer's agent. So he wanted them combined. So it made more sense in that scenario to upload all of the documents he had in the documents tab, then combine any that were separated and then put them in an envelope. So there was just five documents instead of like eight because three of them had two to the same offer. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. In theory, it makes sense. In practice, I'm not sure I it know. does yet. <laughs> So let so me Aaron. upload some documents into the documents tab and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna add some random documents. All right, so I've added these four documents. Um, maybe this document and this document I want them to be one document instead of two. All I'm going to do is put a check mark in them. And then there's a combine button right here. It's like three pages, one page on top of two pages, kind of. Click that. I can choose which order these two documents go in. So if I want um, one time credit card first and then branch off a second, I'd do that or vice versa. Name the document. So. I want it to be called Offer 123 Main Street. Now I have five documents. So in theory, I can now delete these two, right? Because I've combined them and they're right here together. So I'm gonna delete those two so I don't accidentally send them twice. Everyone following so far? Mm -hmm. This is not basic use of, of DocuSign. I just wanted to point it out because I realized this morning there's things like that that you need to do on a semi-regular basis. So uh, you, so Alex had to do this for each specific client to do the rejection. Yeah, I mean, some of them were already just one document, like the buyer's agent sent them as one PDF. Yeah. And some sent them as two PDFs. So he we, wanted them combined to keep it 
more straightforward for him to send them back to everybody. What's the best practice? Do you know? No. I don't think there is a best practice. It, okay. Give or take. Some people combine everything into one package. Some people send them all separate. Anita, do you have a preference when you're receiving offers? Um, I'd rather get it all together, to be honest with you, than broken down because it's just much easier and you just open one thing and that's it instead of multiple. Now the flip side to that is once you're uploading them into command, they have to be separated into individual documents. Right. So, so just however, DocuSign makes that really easy. So remember we had that training a bit ago, Jen and Sherry, you were both on it for splitting PDFs and I was showing mm. you the website. So then yeah. I, I did a DocuSign training and guess what? If I click here, I, or sorry, if I right click on here, I can say split and I can split it right in DocuSign. That's brilliant. I yeah. love it. Brilliant. So when you're talking about combining documents, I, I'm just trying to visualize multiple buyers getting rejections. Are you combining all the buyers into one document? No. no. Just individual buyers. Yeah. Here's your one. Thank you. Okay. I was starting to, I was like, no. oh my gosh, I would be so messed up if I was trying to respond to multiples. No. So in document. that situation, there, it, there was um, water and septic schedules with each offer. Okay. So some of the agents sent an APS and a water and septic schedule separate. Okay. Right. So he just wanted them to be one document. Okay. Um, okay. So now that we have our documents in the documents tab, I can go create an envelope with these documents. So I'm going to click on envelopes, create, build a new one. Um, let's pretend these are my listing documents. Now, when I'm adding which documents to the envelope, I'm going to click on room docs and there they all are because I put them in the documents tab. So I can choose all of these or some, it doesn't matter. You can choose one, all of them, some of them. The other option, if you don't have to mess around with combining, splitting and all of that, you can just go straight into an envelope and when you're adding documents, just upload them in the envelope and then they'll end up in your documents tab in the end, which is usually the way that I train, I teach it. Um, it just kind of skips a tab, but I realized this morning that some people would like to know you can add them in the documents tab, mess with them before you're sending them. Honestly, so can, really appreciate that. Yeah, you can um, do a combination. So these three I added from the room already and these three I just uploaded. It really doesn't matter. So then we're just going to add our recipients. So who am I sending these documents to? So if I go to add recipient and then room participants, I'm in here because I'm the agent and my two clients were pulled from command. Nice. Okay. You can set a signing order if you wish. Um, so best example of this would be you're writing an offer. So you're going to have, well, I guess yourself, you won't be there as the listing agent because you don't need to sign the offer. Um, but so you're going to have your clients here and then you're going to add a recipient by email address. And Sherry is... Come on. Oh. Sherry is the listing agent. You right. remembered? <laughs> You're like my hero right now. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to make Sherry second. Everyone else can be first. I don't care what order my clients sign in. They can sign at the same time. It doesn't matter but I want Sherry to be after everybody else. And I just want Sherry to receive a copy. So if I'm writing an offer, Jen and Alex are my clients. As soon as they sign, as soon as they, the second of those people click finish, it's automatically gonna send a copy to Sherry, who is the listing agent. And she's just gonna receive a copy. She's obviously not signing it. Yeah, and I don't need to be there as a witness or anything because I wasn't there. So I can't be a witness and DocuSign takes care of that part. DocuSign okay. is the witness. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Cool. You can always and, ask her after that because I usually review mine before I send them off. Yeah. 
So totally, this is situational. If you want to make sure your client signed it properly, everything looks right, don't set it up this way. You'll get the completed version and then you can just send it to the listing agent, right? If you wanna review the offer before you send it over to the listing agent. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Right, um, I mean, another way you could do this. So if you have a listing, you receive an offer, and you're sending it to your sellers, they're checking accepted and they're just signing that they accept it. You can put the buyer's agent in here. So as soon as they check, or as soon as they sign that they accept it, it automatically goes back to the buyer's agent. Right. Again, if you want to review it, don't do that. I mean, for your first couple deals, maybe don't do that just so you're taking your time reading things over like 20 times, making sure everything's right. But- <laughs> I am so feeling that, yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, it is a time saver, but you should review things a bunch. All right. So I'm just going to remove Sherry here for now. Um, so then here is your email subject and your email message. So just write whatever you want these people to see. Keep in mind, if I was writing an offer and I had the listing agent in here to receive it after my buyer signed, mm. the listing agent's also going to see this message. So don't say, we'll offer this for now. Then if we find out we're competing, we'll add $25,000. Like, right. Don't say that because the listing agent will see it. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're just going to click next. It's going to open all of these documents. I added six documents. So it's taking a minute to load. And here's where we place our signatures and whatnot. So Alex, this I should have uploaded. Let me scroll down and skip those documents that I just uploaded off my desktop. And I'll get to these documents where it, it makes sense to put signatures. So here's my WWR. I need both of my clients to initial here. So we have Alex is highlighted right now. Here's a drop down of everybody who needs to sign. So right now I'm on Alex. I'm going to put his initial right here. I can make it smaller if I wish. And Jen is my other client. So I'm going to switch this to Jen and put her initial in the other spot. Ooh, and it auto sized it to be the same as the, yeah, uh, ooh, yeah. it yeah. learns. Good with that. Yeah. Okay. So then For so we need many reasons. <laughs> signatures. So we're going to, again, make that one smaller. When you're using a signature, you have to use the date sign field. Okay, so DocuSign will automatically date and timestamp the signatures. So I don't have to make that field as big as the space? No. Okay. No. So I'm doing good with what I did there. Yeah. And don't Sorry, you know, um, when you're doing it, you know how when I do it in a dot loop, like, well, the way I do it anyways, the uh, initials and everything. I have to put them in every single page. Will this automatically populate to all the other pages that need initials or do I have to go to every page? No, you have to go to every page. Okay. So now we're on our SDBA. So again, I need my client's initials here. So we're gonna go initial, they're still small. So one time saving tip, um, because I know this, the SDBA is four pages and three of the pages need initials in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. I can drag. So I'm just clicking and dragging my mouse. See, it's building that square. It's going to highlight both of those fields when I let go. Now on my keyboard, I'm pressing control C for copy or command C if you're on a Mac. Now I'm going to scroll to the next page where I need initials in the exact same spot and press control V for paste or command V if you're on a Mac and it's gonna place them there. Mm, so there's it. less clicking and going back and forth, right? And so then again, I know what I need on this page. So command, control V and it's gonna paste them here again. And then here we need signatures. So same thing, we'll put Jen's signature. Again, we need date signed. We're gonna use that field. Now we need Alex's. And then for the first time, we need my signature. So this is the first blue field. So Erin, if we miss something, 
um, they'll let us know the people reviewing it at will, will DocuSign let us know or no, obviously DocuSign's not that smart. Okay, the brokerage will let us know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good with that. One other tip that I love because my OCD is going crazy that these aren't perfectly aligned right now. Again, mm -hmm. if you click and drag and highlight these three, you can align them. So I can make them all be aligned with the furthest left or all be aligned with the furthest right. Oh yeah. In the same line. That's fantastic. <laughs> and then if you really want to be crazy, I could do these two and make them be aligned at the bottom. <laughs> but that's a bit much. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's just enough. <laughs> <laughs> so then we click send and your clients get it. It's really, really simple. Um, Anita, we didn't do this with you because you aren't in the, you didn't join in the last year, but every new agent, we DocuSign their paperwork to, they have to fill it out. Like it's all text boxes and I never get questions or like, I don't know how to do this. So that's how easy it is on the client's end. It's simple. And when it's just signatures, it's literally like, click here, click here, click here, click here. And I like my signature better in DocuSign. <laughs> yeah. I like have really nice penmanship. <laughs> um, just one thing to keep in mind when you're using electronic signatures, you still have to explain what the documents mean to your clients. Mm. Because DocuSign is literally like, click, and then it jumps to the next signature. Like they could very easily be signing things without reading them. It's still your job to make sure that they know what they're signing. Right, so like a Zoom call or something to review documents prior yeah. to sending it to them and recording those calls if you're able and- Yeah, yeah. That's a CY, is this, was it a CYM or CYA move? Cover your ass. <laughs> Um, so there are other fields that you can use. So there's a text box. If you were supposed to put something in additional provisions, you forgot when you were in web forms, you could add that now. Um, just make sure if you're using a text box, it's assigned to you. Otherwise your clients will be able to type in it when you send it to them and you don't want your clients typing in here. So do we need to have them initial beside the text box in any way to acknowledge that they saw that? Um, you should. It's, I mean, it's best practice to just do it. In theory, I don't think you have to because it is there when they're signing it. But it's, but it takes two not. seconds to drop two initial boxes, right? Right. I'd do it. Yeah. Again, covering the, the ass kind of move. I just, yeah. anyway, I just like making sure the details yeah. are there. Apparently, it's part of my disc, Aaron. I don't know. <laughs> I don't believe it. Um, so there's other fields again. So there's check boxes. So when you receive an offer and you need to check your sellers, whether they accept decline or are countering, you can bring a check box over. If you don't know what your client's going to do, um, I feel like most people know and they check it for them and then have their client sign. But if you don't know what they're going to do, you can use a radio button. So the difference between a checkbox and a radio is a checkbox. If I put checkboxes here, they can check all of these. They can check none of them. It doesn't matter. If I do radio mm -hmm. buttons, they have to check and can only check one of these. Nice. nice. So it forces them to choose one and then they can't, but they can't do all. Mm -hmm. see when I did the next one it deleted the other yeah so it forces them to choose one so if you're receiving an offer on your listing they have they can only choose accept reject or counter right mm -hmm. so that is a good um, option if you don't know what your clients are doing when you send it to them um, most people I think just put the checkbox automatically or you can still just put that there so that they are the ones checking it off not you and it does prompt them to have to choose one before yeah it lets them so it? all okay. fields you can choose if it's required or not oh, okay so if i wanted to say these are not required i could uncheck the required field 
but if you require it, they have to pick one of these, but they cannot pick more than one. Okay. So same with signatures. If for some reason I am saying he doesn't or she doesn't have to sign this field, I can say it's not required. She can sign it if she wants to, but she doesn't have to. Okay. Doesn't make sense in this situation. Obviously it's required here. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So that is the basic way to use DocuSign. So downloading it from web forms, then uploading it here and sending it for signatures. I do want to show you um, some templates. So we do have all of our documents in template form in DocuSign. Um, the templates that make the most sense to use and will really make your life easier are the trade record sheet and the property disclosure statement. So the property disclosure statement, your clients are supposed to fill out. Um, so this using it in DocuSign and using the template really helps. So let's mm. create a new envelope. So I'm still on the envelopes tab. I'm going to say new envelope and I'm going to call this one PDS. I'm just going to do the PDS for right now. So when I'm adding documents, I'm going to click use a template instead. And I'm going to click on shared with me because you didn't create this template. It was created and then shared to you. It always takes a long time to load. <laughs> I imagine there's several of them in there, right? Yeah. So there's a search bar you can scroll through or you can use the search bar. Um, so property disclosure statement. Now, extremely important when you're adding recipients, you have to choose pre-tagged roles or it won't work. Okay. Only when you're using a template. If you're uploading PDFs into DocuSign, you won't even have this option. But if you're using templates, you have to use pre-tag rules. So then you'll see when I click here, it says, okay, an agent is required on this document. So you're going to go in here and say, okay, I'm the agent. And then seller one and seller two. If you only have one seller, only fill out seller one. It's fine. So I'll choose Jen as seller one, and then we'll choose Alex as seller two. Just keep in mind with the PDS, seller one is the one who's going to be filling out the PDS. So choose like your techier person as seller one. They're the ones that's gonna type in every, every field. They're probably gonna be sitting together to do it anyway, um, but just choose your techier person. And then again, your email subject and email message, whatever you wanna say. And when we go to next, you will see why this will save so much time. I'm excited. There's so much to fill out in this. Yeah. So you will see in the top left, I am yellow. Jen, who is seller one, is blue, and Alex is purple. So everything yellow I have to do is the agent. So I'm typing in the property address and the PID number. Simple. Everything that's blue is for Jen to do. So it's automatically gonna fill in her name. And then there's a text box right here. So we have owned the property since. And she's gonna type that in once I send it to her. It is solid blue because it is required. Okay. Now, down here, are you aware of any structural problems, unrepaired damage, dampness, or leakage? Jen, because it's blue, it's going to check yes or no. And it's a radio symbol. So if she, I can only check one. Exactly. That's and great. then it says, if yes, provide details. So there is an, a text box here that is outlined in blue, which means it's assigned to Jen, but it's not solid blue because it is not required. Mm -hmm. Because if they check no, then they're not going to type anything in here. So there is still room for error on your client side. They could check yes and then not type in here. So you do need to check that kind of stuff when you get it back from them, but hopefully they're just paying attention. I mean, everything, if yes, provide details, that's pretty standard. Hopefully they just go ahead and type so in here. Erin, should something like that happen, 
you get it back, you review it as the agent. When you, you have to send it back to them again to say, hey, you need to fill this in. Yeah. But how do you indicate to them then that, that that's required? You just change it to required as a field? If they said yes, can you do Yeah, so do what that? I would do, I would take the version that they already filled out, download mm -hmm. it as a PDF, upload it back in here and send it to them again. That time you'll have to manually add the text boxes because it's no longer a template. Right. And just make the text boxes mandatory for whichever Perfect. ones they missed, right? Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. So purple is Alex. So it's just going to automatically put Alex's name here. Down here, we have their initials. And yellow is the agent. So you're typing in the property. Blue is that, seller will one. Will that pre-fill if you filled it in the first one? Does it, no, that's no, too unfortunately. So see why this is gonna save you so much time. So you're saying the initials and the signature are in that template automatically and you don't have to add them. Exactly. You don't have to drag anything over. Um, if I had only put in seller one and no seller two, everything purple just wouldn't be here. I am I like that. This. That's really great because it reduces errors and it's all there and it's, yeah. yeah. People that are tech savvy would be good with this. Yeah. I mean, this is very similar to when I sent the KW paperwork to you guys when you first joined. This is extremely similar, right? It was full of text boxes and just give us all of your information, right? Yep. It was very simple. I didn't have any questions, very yeah. easy to follow. And if there is a tech question, I would probably have it. So it went very seamless. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very easy on their end. So That's that awesome. um, is the PDS. The other document that is great for using the templates is your trade record sheet. So your trade record sheet doesn't go to your clients at all. It's only for you to fill in, but it's just a lot easier to do it in DocuSign than anywhere else. You can do it in, there's Excel versions around, so you could open it up in Excel and then save it as PDF and then send it in, or you could just do it in here. I'll show you that too, but it's, okay, go away, save and close, get out of here. Um, new envelope. This one is our trade record sheet. We're going to use a template shared with me. So like I was saying, we do have all of the documents that are in web forms in these templates as well. Um, but web forms is much easier to use. It autofills better. DocuSign doesn't mm. autofill. Mm. So these two documents, the templates for sure make sense. Actually, you know what? Also, um, the acknowledgement and waiver that you get buyers to sign saying that they decided not to do a house inspection or not to do whatever. Um, that makes sense in here. So anything that's not in web forms, you can use the DocuSign templates for. But if it's in web forms other than PDFs, it makes most sense just to do it in web forms. I do love the pre-filling in web forms. That yeah. was yeah. freaking brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay, so I added my trade record sheet from the templates. Add recipient, you have to use pre-tagged roles or it won't work. The only role on this document is the agent. So you're just gonna choose yourself. And we'll go next. And it's going to be super similar. All your text boxes are here. So every I'm the only person on here. Everything's yellow. Property address is required. You have to check off which, are you double ending it? Are you on the listing side, the selling side? The MLS number, the MLS number is not required in case you're doing dealing with an exclusive. Um, but nine times out of 10, you're going to have an MLS number. Sale price, closing date. I put these as not required because some people like to fill out their trade record sheet right away and they might not know the lawyers yet. Um, I guess these shouldn't, buyers and sellers and then agents should be required because you would know that right away. Um, 
And then commissions, again, these are not required only because if you're on the buying end, you're not going to know the listing commissions. You can't fill that in. Um, and then obviously the referral is not required because if there's no referral, you're not filling it in. And the team splits is not required because if you're not on a team, you're not filling it in and so on. So this just really, it saves you from using Excel, saving as PDF, then uploading it to command. If you just do it in here, once you're, um, once you send and sign, then you can easily add it to command from DocuSign. Um, Does yeah. receipt of funds uh, make sense in a here or no? Uh, I would do it in web forms. Okay. I'm very excited about the prospect of doing that someday. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about the templates? Um, also, oh, go oh, ahead. sorry, go ahead. What I was going to say is, so you said that some people like to fill them out right away. Uh, is there a way to hang on to them in here? You could at any point, like, save it as a draft. Okay. But it doesn't really make sense. If you're not going to submit it until it's firm and you have all of the information, then just Wait. don't even start it until then. Yeah. Right? I mean, I guess, like, I don't know. Sometimes you're just waiting for the lawyers and stuff. I guess yeah. just wait till you have all that info and then send it in. Like, yeah. I don't know how quickly do they want them in the office once they're firm. It's easier to, well, it's easiest to input a sale when we have the trade record sheet. Um, but most people don't send it, right? Some people send it as when they're sending in the APS, they also send the trade record sheet. And then they just end up submitting a couple of them as they get more info. Mm -hmm. um, which you can do, but most people don't submit it until it's firm. Okay. Once it's firm, they're looking for it right away. So, and the reason why is because it's like a waste of time until you know it's an absolute. Is this why? Yeah, and I'm. I mean, I guess price changes um, until it's mm -hmm. firm. There could be price changes. Mm -hmm. There could be closing date changes. You usually don't know the lawyers right away. It takes a little bit before you know the lawyers. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, if the price changes, then you have to change the commissions. So most people wait till they're firm just to avoid double work. Although there's not many price changes anymore, <laughs> so. Okay, that makes cool. sense. Wow. wow. This is yeah, awesome. so the templates are another option. Um, usually web forms makes more sense, but any of the KW documents the templates would make more sense. Otherwise you have to, you could print them and handwrite them and then scan them or upload the PDF and then place all of the signatures and initials, or you could just use the template. So yeah, you could in theory, leave your envelopes in draft mode, like, like I've been doing, cause I just haven't clicked send. Um, but it doesn't really make sense. You, you would probably just do it once you have all the info. Any questions? No? No, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Anita, do you have any questions? No, I just got to start using it before Renee rings my neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. She keeps saying, you got to do DocuSign. I'm going, oh. Well, you know what? You took the right, the first step. This oh yeah, I've gone, I've gone the first step a num number of times. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I get down to writing the offers or doing all that, it's like, okay, I don't have the time to try yeah. to make sure this is correct. I just go back to what I'm very comfortable with. Yeah, Thank it's you. hard in this market. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess next listing, Listings are less time sensitive, right? To get your yeah, listing correct. paperwork done. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to try it out then. Yeah. When you're writing up, when the listing agent's calling you saying, I need your offer right now, it's hard. But once you do it a couple of times, you'll be good. Yeah. It's just doing it. That's the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? Or you can just practice, send things to your husband to sign. Yeah. 
And I think when you're new and you have to work with a different system, it's easier because you don't know any different, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we don't have to unlearn anything. Yeah. Right. Or, or we don't know the great things of the old stuff that we can't, <laughs> we just keep hanging on to it. And we talk about it for years after it's gone. It's so wonderful, right? So I get where you're coming from. And that's a really good value add to Aaron to say to Anita, try it when you're doing a listing. Yeah. yeah. Right. The two listings I just had, these people were not computer savvy at all. They didn't have computers, right. so everything was manual. So um, I'm hoping the next one I get, I'll be able to do it this way. Hopefully yeah, that. try it because I am not techie, and I should. I'm gonna. I'm trying to stop saying that because right. I'm really. I, I really am getting there. So hopefully this will be accountability. I won't say it again. Um, but when I signed everything for the coaching and from Aaron, it was extremely easy and fast. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. Less room for error that yeah. we honestly changed our, I'm just going to stop recording.